And that's exactly what it is. Uh, the government's been, been lying to the public for 42 years. And it's very, very difficult to go back and say, we've been, admit that we've been lying to you. 42 years is a long time for the government to keep anything a secret, let alone something as sensational as UFOs. UFO researchers couldn't agree more. They say there have been huge cracks in the cover-up, but that the public and press haven't been listening. At the center of this whole scenario is the conservative New Mexico town, Roswell, which in 1947 was home to the Roswell Army Air Base. These days, the locals use these old airstrips to race dragsters and the old hangars as an industrial park. But 42 years ago, this is where it all began, the birthplace of what some have called the Cosmic Watergate. What happened on that night in July 1947 sounds like the plot of an old science fiction movie. Residents saw a bright object streak across the sky. 70 miles out of town, it exploded, scattering debris over a large area. Rancher Mac Brazel found the strange metallic fragments and days later reported the matter to authorities. Roswell Intelligence Officer Major Jesse Marcel was dispatched to the scene to collect the wreckage. One thing I'm certain of, being familiar with all our activities, that it was not a weather balloon, nor an aircraft, nor a missile. It was something else of which we didn't know what it was. Marcel said the thin foil-like metal was virtually indestructible with strange hieroglyphics written on it. In his words, it was not of this earth. Base commander Colonel William Blanchard, certainly familiar with all aircraft of the day, agreed. He called up his press liaison, Lieutenant Walter Hott. He called and said words to this effect. We've got pieces of what we think is a flying saucer. Hot wrote and released a story that was immediately picked up by newspapers and wire services, spurring phone calls from all over the world. Major Marcel was told to load the wreckage into a B-29 and fly it to Wright Field in Ohio. He landed first at 8th Air Force Headquarters in Fort Worth, where General Roger Ramey took control of the debris ordered Marcel and others to keep quiet and issued another news release saying the debris was actually from a crashed weather balloon. As he and Marcel posed for reporters with debris from a balloon, the real wreckage, according to witnesses, was flown under armed guard to Ohio. The newsmen saw very little of that material, a very small portion of it. And none of the important things, like these uh, members that had these hieroglyphics or, or markings on it. And when the general came in, he told me not to say anything that he would handle it. The story held for 30 years until Stan Friedman and his colleagues started digging. They found more than 100 witnesses with first or second-hand knowledge of the Roswell incident. They also believed that the debris was from an alien spacecraft that crashed miles beyond the Brazel Ranch. Numerous witnesses say they saw the crashed disk, the bodies of dead aliens inside. But the military seized the evidence and swore them to secrecy. Walter Hott says flat out the story of the weather balloon was a cover-up. So does Bob Shirky. Shirky was the officer who ordered up the B-29 that transported the strange debris. He saw the wreckage and thinks if it really was from a weather balloon, it wouldn't have been flown to Ohio in such a hurry. Shirky also has knowledge of the alien bodies. The information is from a close friend who ran the town funeral parlor in the 40s. It has never been made public until now. Did you see the sketches in the paper of the humanoids or the bodies? And I said, yes. He says, well, I can tell you that's what they look like. So that, uh, our funeral parlor supplied the caskets for the Air Force to use because we had the contract. And they came in and took all the baby size or youth sized caskets we had. What would an alien spacecraft be doing in Roswell in the first place? Well, in the late 40s and early 50s, New Mexico had more UFO sightings than any other place in the world. Consider one possible explanation. It was at Los Alamos that the atomic bomb was developed and built. The Trinity site is where the first A-bomb was detonated. White Sands is where all post-war missile tests were conducted. And Roswell was home to the 509th, the only atomic bomb wing in the world. If an alien intelligence wanted to learn about human military capabilities, New Mexico was the place to be. The strange sightings and somewhat flimsy excuses continued long after the alleged Roswell crash. Lonnie James was an Air Force radar operator in Roswell in the 50s. He recalls at least three instances when UFOs were picked up on radar and seen from the ground. Jets were scrambled, but they couldn't get close. The sweep on the radar comes around every five seconds. The rate of speed was so great we could not 
it disappeared off the radar before we could get a uh, so check the speed on them. How fast is that? Uh, well, it was well over 2,000, well over. The official explanation for what James and others saw, the ubiquitous excuse, weather balloons. I think you know as well as I do, George, that weather balloons do not behave in that fashion. Of course, UFO buffs smell a cover-up, but what about the level-headed people of Roswell? Do they believe that a flying saucer crashed outside their town? I don't know percentage-wise uh, what the, the difference would be, but I think after the recent exposure, I think that really a lot of people believe it. An odd footnote to the story, in September, the Roswell incident was featured on the NBC program Unsolved Mysteries. Within days of that broadcast, the people of Roswell started seeing weather balloons. During our interview with Walter Hott, a weather balloon floated over his backyard. Another was spotted on the drive from Roswell to Albuquerque. Is there a vital need for weather data in the New Mexican desert, or is someone trying to prove something? Former U.S. Senator Barry Goldwater thinks there's something fishy about the whole story. As chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee and an Air Force general, Goldwater had a top-secret security clearance. During a visit to Wright-Patterson Air Base in Ohio, he asked to view the hangar where the Roswell wreckage and other UFO information were reportedly stored. Permission was denied. Goldwater later wrote that he was told the matter was classified above top secret. He was also told to never ask again. What does the government know that it isn't telling us? Tomorrow, we'll delve into the government's own files to find out if the cover-up is real and ongoing. And later, we'll reveal the identity of this man who says the government is flying alien craft in the Nevada desert. It's uh, not only a crime against the American people, it's a crime against the scientific community.